Hello creatures, welcome to Bound by Words. Today we are doing the AuthorTube newbie tag. I'm really excited to be finally posting this video. Jenna Streety created this tag as a way for us AuthorTubers to introduce ourselves so that we can make like-minded friends in the writing community, both between viewers and other creators. So if you like what you see, please check out my channel. I have about a dozen other videos posted at the time you're seeing this. So the author two but newbie questions, I will be reading them off of my iPad and answering them as I go. The only one that I answered ahead of time was the first question, which is what is your book's pitch? And the reason I did this ahead of time is because I honestly wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to say for this. But what I did come up with is that my novel is a YA fantasy story that takes place in a world where the magic is tied directly to a treaty between the races. And it, hi, <laughs> and it takes place immediately following the death of the last known witch and follows a band of djinn as they hunt for anybody who can take her place in the upcoming treaty renewal. So I don't have much of a working title right now, but I have been referring to it as Project Witch Hunt, and I think that's been the most appropriate thing to call it, so it's probably what I'm going to be sticking with for the foreseeable future. And he climbed to the end of the desk just to, to stare at me for not petting him, so don't mind me while I take care of my boy. But the second question is, if you were a book, how would you pitch yourself? And this, I think, is the most challenging question on the AuthorTube newbie tag. This one's the one that felt like homework. So it's a little hard for me to answer because I am a very social person. If you have worked with me or hung out with me in person, you would know that I love people and I love meeting people and having friends and like having good conversation, but I also really enjoy my solitude and I spend a lot of my free time alone. So even though I am really talkative and extroverted when I am out, I really just enjoy being home and doing things with hobbies that usually require a little bit more solidarity like reading and writing and stuff like that. But I think I would say something like having, yeah, having a quiet yet adventurous MC as she struggles to find her work-life balance on her quest to be a captivating storyteller and appreciator in English and in Japanese. So if you don't know me personally, I actually studied abroad for a year in Japan and it was one of the best adventures I've ever had. That's what my bachelor's degree is, is in Japanese culture and language. So I am studying for my fluency test and I have a couple novels that I've been reading in Japanese that I really love and enjoy. So as I am becoming a better writer in English and as I am furthering my education, I will be leaning into that bilingual translating kind of area and it kind of relates to big news that I have at the end of this video. So if you are curious about the big educational changes that are happening in my life, please watch to the end of the video. But question number three is what do you usually write? And I almost always write YA fantasy, and it does have sort of a range of like low fantasy, slightly more on the contemporary side, all the way to high fantasy, like other realms, dark fantasy kind of things. It is a pretty wide range, but I think that it all generally is in worlds that magic and creatures and stuff like that exist because that's what I find to be interesting and those were the stories that as I read them they were the most captivating. So the next question is what is something you'll never write? And I probably will never write entirely contemporary stories. I don't find them to be super thrilling and that's just a personal preference thing. If you have any really amazing, really page-turning contemporary stories that you love, post them in the comments below so that I can also pick them up and give them a try and see if maybe I'm just not seeing the right side of contemporary. The only part of that genre I really do enjoy is the like horror thriller aspect. I think realistic horrors are a little bit more terrifying than like supernatural horror stories. Um, another thing I probably won't ever write is like sci-fi in the sense of like UFOs and aliens and like laser fighting and stuff like that. I'm just really not into the, the alien-ish side of sci-fi, but I do like a lot of the like futuristic cyborg side of it. So that's sort of like a gray area, but I don't know if that's something that I myself will ever be writing. So question number five is what is your goal for starting an author tube channel? And Flurry is leaving us. 
All right, bye, Flurry. <laughs> so my goal for starting an author tube channel twofold. So one part of it is for accountability and for tracking. I wanna be able to look back and say, these are the accomplishments I made and this is where I was with my book and this is how my writing was then and this is how it is now. And I really think that is a great aspect of having a record of videos like author tube. The second part is to meet people. Honestly, that is one of the biggest selling points of starting this channel is to make writing friends. So of all the friends that I have in person in my area, I don't think any of them really write or enjoy writing. I do have a friend I studied abroad with who has expressed a little bit of interest in it, but not anything super committal. So I really do want to write people who love the craft as much as I do. So question number six, what made you want to start writing? And I think this one is fairly straightforward. Compelling stories made me want to start writing. These stories where you you sit down and you stop seeing words on the page and you start seeing it play out in your head. The kind where you sit down to read and two hours later you're like, oh crap, I read how many pages? Those were the stories that made me want to be a writer. I want to be able to tell stories that captivate somebody else like that. Question number seven is what is your publishing path? And I don't really think that this is something I'm really at yet. So right now I'm focusing on telling a good story and finding the manuscript or draft that I really think is worth the time and effort to polish and pursue publishing with, and it's definitely a direction I would enjoy going in, but I don't think it's something that I should be thinking about now. But whenever I do get there, for financial reasons, I will probably pursue traditional publishing first, just because as amazing as self-publishing is, I don't know if I have the financial like stability to front all of the costs for publishing a book in hopes that it'll be successful. That's a little scary for me. So as much as I recognize the downsides in traditional publishing, I think it's the most feasible thing for me to be doing. Number eight, what content do you bring to the author tube table? This is something that I am still figuring out a little bit and I would love your feedback on it. So if you ever see videos you like, please give them a thumbs up. If you ever see content you don't like, write a comment. I'm not sensitive. You can let me know if it's something that you found boring or that you wanted me to do a little bit differently. But overall, I think I would like to put useful, informative videos of things that I feel like I've learned really well that I would like to share with you guys. I do have a number of vlog type videos on my channel now, and even though it's sort of like a 50-50 ratio between vlog videos and other videos, I really didn't see them being a bigger part of my channel. I just happened to start right before NaNoWriMo season, and I really wanted to vlog that process. I really enjoy watching other people's like NaNoWriMo vlogs, so I wanted to record my own. But ideally, that'll be a small portion. I want to be able to do videos on how to become a better writer and how to find resources and evaluating stories you like and how to like edit and take apart your own stories and stuff like that. I also think it would be neat to include some food related content on my channel. For example, like best snacks while you're writing is a video I think I'm probably gonna be making soon. I do wanna do a video on like best types of caffeinated drinks to make at home. I am a part-time barista at Starbucks while I'm in school, so I feel like I've learned a couple tips and tricks of the trade that I feel like might be useful. Most writers I know are either addicted to coffee or tea, but it's usually some type of caffeine. So if there's anything in any of those categories that you would like to see, please leave it in the comments below. Number nine is gonna be a little brutal. It is, what is your biggest writing struggle? And I feel like I can make a list, and I feel like anybody who is honest and is very self-aware could probably make a list for this one, but I think the biggest one I'm going with now is going to be the shiny new idea syndrome. And that's whenever you have a story that you're writing and then you have another idea for another story and that one's just so much more appealing to write. I feel like I'm struggling with that a lot like right now in my current situation because even though I have a good book idea and I like it and I have written a good deal of it for NaNoWriMo, I am in the middle of the manuscript phase now and I feel like I have gotten used to the story. I have gotten used to the way the characters sound and I've gotten used to the things that are happening, which in one hand is great because that means I'm in my world and the stuff is gonna start being a lot more consistent and regular and stuff. But on the other hand, it makes other shorter little projects seem really exciting. It makes me want to write short stories and write random scenes because 
It almost makes writing a vacation from my manuscript book, which is starting to feel a little bit more like work. But I plan on pushing through that. I don't think I'm going to commit to any project more than maybe just a couple hundred word scenes to get things out of my system until I am done with this manuscript. So number 10 is what is your best writing skill? And to be honest, I think it's very much related to what I said my struggle was, I think my best skill is writing compelling scenes, like on the small scale, just scenes. And I think it has a lot to do with that's what I practice most. So if you look through my notes all through high school, I have just random two, three page written scenes that I wrote in class while I was just zoning out and I was imagining things. And some of them seem like they have no context. Like if you read it, it seems like it should be the middle of the book, but there's no like setup. There's no understanding of what is happening but it is compelling and it follows the characters and it makes you curious and I feel like that is one of my strong suits but what I struggle with because of that is doing projects on a bigger scale. So with the project I'm working on now, I have a lot of individual scenes that I, I really enjoy and I really like and I really would think that are good enough to share and get feedback on now, but it's the linking the scenes together in a way that is like coherent and smooth and just as enjoyable as reading the scenes individually is one of the things that I struggle with. But I think I have really strong short scenes and I think one of the things that might make it enjoyable is having like descriptive imagery and not having to worry about piecing together a backstory or forming an attitude or a relationship. I can just do the action and the part that is important to the scene. I think another thing I have going for me as far as writing skills is my writing endurance. I do have a lot of problems with the white page syndrome and the sitting down and getting started, but when I do get started, like during NaNoWriMo, I had two or 3,000 word count days, and usually on those days, I'm just spending like a couple hours writing most. If I am focused and I'm really enjoying what I'm writing, I can usually write about a thousand words an hour. So I think that's also probably like tied for the top when it comes to my strongest skill, because the more I get into the writing community, the more I'm seeing that that's not as common as I thought it was. So I do have that going for me. We are on to number 11, and that is what's your biggest author tube question and I didn't really understand this one to be honest I don't know if it's supposed to be like a philosophical like question to like the viewers or if it's something about the way author tube functions and I guess maybe it's vague so it can be whatever I don't know that I generally have a lot of questions except for what kind of content do you guys want to see from me and that seems like a cop-out answer but I don't I don't really have another one for you, I'm sorry. So number 12 is, are you looking for any new channels to follow, betas, CPs, or other types of writing buddies? I am always looking for new channels to follow. If you have a writing channel, no matter what the size of it is, please post your information in the comments. I wanna see it, I wanna come visit your channel. I feel like I have watched all of AuthorTube, and I know I couldn't have, but I've used up my recommendations. I feel like I'm subscribed to so many people, and I just am always looking for new videos that are coming out, and I'm just not seeing enough new stuff on my dashboard, and I want to, so please post your stuff down below. Free reign to spam the comments, as long as it is sharing either your YouTube channel or maybe your favorite YouTube channels, whatever it is, you can post it in the comments. So... I totally forgot what I was thinking about. Um, betas. I'm not looking for betas quite yet. I do want to write my entire draft and go back through and fix a lot of things and then give it at least one solid edit at least before I start looking for betas. Depending on how that first edit goes, I might do a second one. It's really questionable. CPs, so critique partners. I am actually in desperate need of a critique partner and ideally I would want it somebody like roughly my age who writes YA fantasy. So if you're watching this and you're interested in something similar, don't be shy. I want to be able to grow and get feedback with somebody without having to extra polish my manuscript and sort of get it out there. I am a little bit shy. I do want to do like one edit to fix all of my typos and my weird things that I include before I do share things, but my need for good writing relationships outweighs all of that, those feelings. And the last one was other types of writing buddies, and I'm open to any type of writing buddy, honestly. I like most people, most, I think. I like writing. I'm just 
I'm very much looking for writing buddies. And the last question is, what are you most excited for during this new fresh start to AuthorTube? I'm gonna sound extremely redundant when I say making new friends, meeting people, getting feedback, going on sort of like a writing journey. There's so much that I am excited about and I am excited that you came here to watch and support as well. So with those questions out of the way, I have promised big news. I constantly have people asking me like, what are you doing with school now that you're over? Like, what are you gonna do for your job? Because I just graduated in the last year with my BA, so I got a lot of stuff floating around. But I have recently got accepted to the University of Chicago's editing program, their master's level editing program, and it's a pretty intensive course, but I am really excited to get started on that. I actually start in just two weeks. Back to that question about what kind of content will be on my channel, I do plan on including some editing school content. I want to do like what the course load is like for the people who are interested in the program, and I'm thinking I want to do a video for each class saying like what I learned in this class, because some of their classes you can take as standalone classes. You don't have to do the entire certificate so I do want to include that information for anybody who is looking at the program but I officially start on May 26 the editing program flurry is back and he's highlighting my textbooks if you haven't heard of the University of Chicago they formulated the Chicago manual of style right here this old big old guy if you've never seen it in print this is the entire Chicago manual of style this is the format that most publishers use in the US when it comes to formatting and grammar and word usage and stuff like that. There's actually 60 pages of this book that is just on word usage and problematic words and stuff like that. So this is actually my textbook for my first course. I will be reading this over six weeks, so it is a pretty intense class. This is 1,200 pages. It's a good, like, four pounds. But the university made this format originally for their printing press a really long time ago, and it has grown and developed and became sort of the standard. So so I think that this is going to affect and help my writing remarkably. Becoming an editor and learning how to correct and enhance manuscripts in class I feel like is going to give me an edge when it comes to correcting my own manuscript. For everybody who is asking me what I am doing for work and what my job goals are, for now I'm going to stay at Starbucks while I'm studying so I can ace all of my classes. I am planning on taking the JLPT, which is the Japanese Language Proficiency Test, in December this year, and if I pass it, I'm planning on looking for a job in a publishing house that deals a little bit with foreign media so that I can work as an editor and I can live among books and I can just read books all day and critique them and get paid for it. It sounds perfect. By flurry. <laughs> it sounds perfect, but also if I can get into a company that has connections with Japanese types of media, I will be able to translate books from Japanese to English and polish them off and make sure they're all formatted correctly and stuff like that. So it makes my presence a little bit more self-sufficient than beforehand when I was thinking about just doing translating because as a translator, I would need an editor to then go through my work and check everything. But if I pass this course with flying colors, I will then be one unit. So other than basic manuscript editing where you learn the format and all this good information, they also have really interesting classes like developmental editing and developmental editing for fiction. They also have a course called editing electronically where you can learn the electronic workflow that is used within most publishing houses today so I assume it's going to be extremely informative but I am definitely going to keep you guys posted along the journey and I'm definitely going to share things that I learned through editing school along the way as well if you like this video make sure you hit the thumbs up below and the subscribe button so that you'll be notified when I post new videos every Monday